Hello all, welcome to episode 101 in the Data Pack tutorial series, version 1.21. We're going to be detecting when the player starts, holds, and stops using a key. So I've got a carrot here, we're going to use that as my example. So if I try and eat it, we get a start using. Okay, so that's running one function when I start using it. We get tick using, that's running a different function as I continue to use it. And then when I stop using it, we get stop using. So we can obviously see when someone starts using something, is using something, and stops using something. This is sort of like a continuation of the last episode. We're just adding some more functionality to it. Okay, I better thank Gal Sergi for this one, because again, it is his creation. Right, I think what we'll do is uh, stop the intro, stop waffling, and get on and build it now. Here we are in VS Code, and I've added the folders and files already. So in my namespace, I have a new folder advancement. Inside advancement, I have a new file using item. And then inside my namespace function, I have the new folder press, and I have start, stop check, stop, ticking, and using item. And we'll be using the load and the tick. And also inside my namespace, I have the folder predicate, and we have is sneaking. Okay, so those are the folders and files we're going to use. Don't worry if you miss one out, because you can just create them as we go. So I think what we'll do is we'll get it working first, and then we'll go through it and see what it's doing. So let's start with load, because I'm going to need a scoreboard. Scoreboard, objectives, add, and we'll call it timestamp. Oh, seems to remember that one. And it will be of type dummy. Okay, load, bye-bye. Now I'm going to need an advancement for using an item. Um, I'm not going to do anything clever. I'm just going to say using any item. So if we try and eat that carrot like I was in the intro, uh, that will be fine. So let's go misode, advancement generator, criteria, using an item. Let's add that. Trigger, trigger will be using an item. Okay, and we're not going to have any conditions because we're just going to check for using any item. But we will have a reward, and our reward is going to be running a function. So I'll just put a placeholder in there, and I'm going to copy that. Now I'm going to take it back to VS Code and pop it into my advancement. And let's change the function it runs. Start typing my namespace. Okay, and it's going to run the function using item. Let's save that. Okay, now we'll do a test on that. So let's go to using item. And the first thing we'll do is revoke that advancement. Advancement revoke at s only. Start typing my namespace using item. And then we'll just say hi using save. Let's go back. Let's do a reload. And using, using, using. OK, now it should work for anything. So what else can I eat? A potato? So let's try it with the potato. Let's clear the chat, F3D. Yeah, okay, so it's checking if I'm using any item. This is just so we can test our function, basically. Right, now let's do using item. So we've revoked the advancement. Now we're gonna store the game time. Execute. Store the result as a score on a fake player. We'll call them this, yeah, hashtag this, that'll do. Timestamp run time query for game time. Okay. Now let's check if they start using start using the item. So we'll do execute unless score at s timestamp is greater than or equal to this timestamp. Then we will run function press start. Now let's check if they are continually using it. Execute. Uh, now we want if score at s timestamp is greater than this timestamp. Only greater than that time, not greater than or equal. Run function. Using item, no, ticking. And then we will set the player's timestamp to this timestamp. Scoreboard, players, 
operation at s timestamp equals this timestamp. Then we're going to add two to the player's timestamp. Scoreboard players add at s timestamp two. And then we're going to schedule the check to see if they stop using the item. Schedule function stop check. We'll schedule it for two ticks time and we'll do append. Okay, let's save that. And we'll do press start and ticking and put them in. Where's where's press where's start? There we go. I couldn't see it. And we're just literally gonna say start. I have started. Save that one. Ticking. Say I am holding the key. Save that one. And let's do a test to see what we've got. Let's do a reload. Okay, so I have started. I am holding the key. That's all right. We haven't done the stop yet. Let's do the stop. So we'll go off to... So we're in using item. Let's go and do the stop check, which we scheduled for two ticks. Stop check. And in here, we are going to get the game time again. So we're going to execute store result as a score for the fake player called this, their timestamp. We will run time query game time. And now we will execute as all players if score that player timestamp equals this timestamp at that player run function stop and inside stop say I have let go of the key save let's do a test so reload cool I have started I am holding the key I have let go of the key okay now you don't have to do it on a using item. Um, that's what the predicate's there for. Let's do it on a predicate as well. Why not? Let's go and make ourselves a quick predicate. Let's pop over to MISO. Let's go to predicate generator and let's do a sneaking predicate. So let's do entity properties. This predicate flags is sneaking. Let's copy that. Let's take it back to VS Code and pop it into our predicate file and save that. Um, now we need to detect, so let's use the tick function. And we'll just say execute as um, any player predicate equals id is sneaking run function, run the functino, my favorite spelling mistake, just because I like the sound of the word functino. And we'll just run that using item again. We're not using an item, but we're just running the same function. Okay, let's go back and do a reload. Now we should get the same if I sneak. There we go. So now we're, now we're checking if I'm sneaking and doing the same thing. So it's, uh, I have started sneaking. I am holding the sneak key. I have let go of the sneak key. Cool. So we're basically done. Well, that works. Well, let's have um, a little look at it and see if we can work out what's happening. <laughs> right. So obviously we sneak, uh, which is being checked in the tick function, or we use the item, which is being checked in the advancement using item, and both of them are calling the same function. So let's go to that function using item. Okay, now we're revoking the advancement, which obviously if we're sneaking, we don't need to do, but we didn't make any changes. Okay, let's have a look at it. Let's pretend that the game has been running or the world has been running for 10 ticks. So my ticks will, my timestamp will be set to zero and this timestamp will be set to 10. So this will set timestamp, this timestamp to 10. Now let's come and have a look. Let's execute unless zero is higher or equal to 10. Well, it's not, and we're doing it unless, so we say press start. Now let's execute if zero is higher than 10. Well, it's not, so we don't do this one. Now we set 
my timestamp to this timestamp. So my timestamp is 10, this timestamp is 10. Then we're coming here and adding two. So my timestamp is 12, this timestamp is 10. We'll ignore the stop check for now. Right, I'm still holding down the button. Uh, next tick. So game time ticks up to 11. This timestamp is now equal to 11, but my timestamp is equal to 12. Um, and 12 is higher than 11, so we're not going to say start. Uh, 12 is higher than 11, so we will do ticking. Because remember, here's an if, and this one is an unless. So we are now saying ticking. We go down. We set my timestamp to this. So now we both have 12. Now we add 2 to mine, and I've got 14. And we go round again. OK. So you can see how that's a bit working. What about the stop check? So we come down here. And let's say we're both exactly the same. So let's say we both have 10. Because they've both been set to the same here. So let's say we're both on 10. Now mine gets added 2. So now I'm on 12. And game time, this timestamp, is on 10. And now we're going to schedule the stop check for two ticks time. And I've let go of the key. So I'm on 12. This is on 10. And in two ticks, we run stop check. Stop check. So two ticks have gone past. The game time has gone 10, 11, 12. It's now on 12. And we set this timestamp to 12. And I'm still on 12. And my 12 does equal 12. So we press stop. OK, now that is my best explanation of how that is working. If you don't care about how it's working, just paste it in and, and use it however you like. OK, I think this one's pretty useful. Um, in fact, Gal Sergi has sent me a link to uh, a data pack with a sort of a an improved shield. He called it a mega shield. Now, I haven't looked through the whole thing yet, but it uses this start checking. So just to check when you start using the shield and it uses to see when you stop using the shield. So I think we'll probably do a tutorial on that at some point. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Thank you very much to Galsergi and I'll see you all soon. Bye bye.